All right, we are back, guys. We are going to, today, look at the election of 1860. That election brings Abraham Lincoln to the White House. Uh, the pages we're going to be looking at today are 499 to 504 in your textbook. So this is a really dense chapter in that there's tons and tons of uh, information that needs greater explanation. So we're going to divide this slide show up into two parts. So we're just going to be doing the first 13 slides today, and then on Thursday we'll do the final slides. So let's go. All right, so let's do a little bit of review. We know from what we've learned over the last few days and weeks is that the issue of slavery has led to political divisions in this country. Well, what type of divisions, you might ask? So here's one. Well, the Republican Party forms as an anti-slavery party. It is com uh, composed of... Uh, people who did not find other political parties to address slavery the way they wanted to. So we have the Republican Party forming in the 1850s. We have many events that led the nation to continue to be divided over slavery. We have the Missouri Compromise all the way back in 1820 that decided where the line would be drawn and where slavery would be allowed and not. It also gave us Missouri as a slave state and Maine as a free state. We had the Wilmot Proviso, which attempted to ban slavery in any lands taken from Mexico after the Mexican-American War. We have the Compromise of 1850 that led to stronger uh, fugitive slave laws. We have the book Uncle Tom's Cabin, Bleeding Kansas, which was this violent struggle between pro-slavery and anti-slavery factions in Kansas. And then we have that dreadful Dred Scott court case that reached the Supreme Court. So here's what we're going to learn today. We're going to learn about Abraham Lincoln, how he won the election in 1860, and uh, that he had uh, received the majority of the popular vote and the electoral college vote. And in Virginia, it was the closest presidential election in history. Virginia is going to be a big part of this story coming up for the rest of the year. And that the election of Abraham Lincoln led to seven southern states seceding from the Union. That means they decided, hey, you know what? We don't like this Lincoln guy. We don't like where this country's heading. We're out, okay? We're no longer part of the United States. So seven states are going to do that in response to the election of Abraham Lincoln. So the Democratic Convention was held in Charleston, South Carolina in April of 1860. Now, every election year, we have these Republican and Democratic conventions. It's where they nominate their uh, candidate for the presidency. So this year, actually, depending on what happens with this pandemic and stuff like that, but this year's Democratic Convention is actually in Wisconsin. It's supposed to be in Milwaukee in July or August or something like that. Who knows what that's going to look like. Uh, it was clear that Northern and Southern Democrats had very different ideas about slavery. This is back in 1860. And it led the Democratic Party to split along sectional lines. Okay, We talk about that when we talk about sectionalism. We talk about different regions or areas of the country. So the Democratic Party when I say they're splitting along sectional lines, that means that there's going to be a northern faction of the Democrats and a southern, and they're going to have very, very different ideas. Speaking of ideas, let's look at the idea of a political platform. That is a statement of beliefs or goals that a political party has, usually leading up to a election or after an election, they might have a platform of, of initiatives and policies that they're going to pursue and you guys already know this, popular sovereignty means that people have a say in the government and the making of laws that affect them. So here we go. What was the division between these two parts of the Democratic Party? Well, we had Southern Democrats who wanted to defend slavery as its platform. Northern Democrats, they didn't go that far. They wanted to support popular sovereignty as a way of deciding whether a territory became a free state or slave state. We saw that in Kansas. It led to bloodshed and violence and chaos. But that's their idea of addressing slavery. Popular sovereignty. Leave it to the people. So this would allow the people to vote and decide. And the Northern Democrats actually won the platform at this convention. But here's that sectional division. The Southern Democrats didn't like that the Northerners got their way at this convention, even though they're part of the same political party. And they leave. So there was no candidate to represent the party chosen at that. So they're going to try again. Now the Democrats are going to meet at another convention in Baltimore in Maryland to try to choose a candidate. So here we see that division again. They can't even agree on a candidate. So the Northern Democrats support Stephen A. Douglas 
uh, and and he's known for his support for popular sovereignty. Close pro slavery Southern Democrat support John Breckinridge of Kentucky. Breckinridge is also the vice president under uh, James Buchanan, and he will end up being a Confederate military leader in the Civil War. So the Republican Party, meanwhile, they nominate Abraham Lincoln of Illinois. Yes, the guy in the five and the penny. So Lincoln was against the expansion of slavery into the territories. And we even see a rare occurrence, a fourth party throw its hat in the ring. That is the Constitutional Party. You might say, oh, I've never heard of the Constitutional Party. And that's not surprising because they weren't along for very, or weren't around for very long. So their goal is to preserve the Union. It means keep it from dividing. They don't want all these pieces of... Uh, regions like the South. They don't want states seceding or leaving. So here are the parties and their candidates. Northern Democrats go for Stephen A. Douglas. Southern Democrats go for John Breckinridge. The Republican Party goes for Abraham Lincoln. And the Constitutional Party goes for John Bell. <clears throat> so here we see illustration of those four candidates. We see their political party designation. They each get a color code. Democrat, Constitutional Union. Pink, that's Democrat, Breckenridge from the Southern Democrats, Northern Democrats, Constitutional Union, and Republican. Yep. So here's what the electoral map looks like in this election. Wow, look at all those colors. Isn't that so, so bright and appealing to the eye when you have four candidates running? So up here in the red, this is the winner, Abraham Lincoln. You notice strong support in the north right here. All those red states go to Abraham Lincoln. We also, Oregon and California go for Abraham Lincoln. Stephen A. Douglas of the Northern Democrats, we see not much support here. Just Missouri, which we're going to consider a border state when we get into the Civil War. And it looks like he's got a little bit of southern New Jersey right there. John Bell has these yellow states right here. And then John Breckinridge, the Southern Democrats, gets this whole sweep of the South. But if you look at the numbers of electoral votes, most of these southern states have smaller electoral vote totals than we have up in a lot of these states up here. So that's what helps Lincoln to win this election. So what were their issues on slavery? The two big or the two most popular candidates in the election. So Abraham Lincoln and John Breckinridge, they're said to have the most extreme views on slavery. Lincoln wanted to stop the expansion of slavery into the territories, and Breckinridge insisted that federal government protects slavery in the states or in the territories. Stephen Douglas and John Bell were considered the moderates. They're not on either end of the spectrum. They simply didn't want any new laws related to slavery passed by the federal government. All right. So what becomes of the election? As you know, Abraham Lincoln wins. Here's the electoral map again. So what does the election show? Well, it shows that the nation is tired of compromising. Lincoln beats Douglas in the north. Breckenridge meets Douglas in the South. So if you go back, or, or Breckenridge won most of the South. So we said on a previous slide that Lincoln and Breckenridge had the most extreme views on slavery. So they're going to be the winners here. The moderates, which were Bell and Douglas, they kind of win the border states, but they don't have a really strong showing. So this is going to be one of your questions on a Google form today. I just want you to take a look at this map. It's on page 500, and let me know what you think of it. That is it for today. We'll pick up with the rest of this presentation tomorrow. We're going to talk about secession. Oh, boy.